Superintendent Lockett, CCUSD Board of Education, Principal Cooper, CCHS staff, guests, and most importantly, the class of 2020. My name is Daniel Xavier, and I am your Senior Class Council President. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Culver City High School's Class of 2020 graduation. Thank you all for jo joining us to celebrate what is for some about the happiest day of our lives and to others, the saddest. No matter how you're feeling today, what really matters is that those of us who are in the cap and gowns have finally made it. It's been a long four years and, and today marks the last page of our four year chapter. We stand here today at the end of our four year chapter, ready to open a new one. While we all anticipate this day to come, I must say I am sad to see it end. These past four years have been one crazy roller coaster that was full of ups and downs, triumphs and defeats, sadness and joy. Fellow members of the class of 2020, I am certain that each and every one of you will do great things in the years to come. And I can't wait to see everyone flourish. And I hope you enjoy this virtual graduation ceremony. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and the bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs burst. to welcome everyone to Culver City High School's commencement ceremony and it is with great pride that I'll be presenting the graduating class of 2020. Please join me in thanking our esteemed board members Dr. Steve Levin, Anna Lair, Dr. Tashawn McKeithen, Dr. Kelly Kent, and board president Summer McBride. I would also like to thank our CCUSD administrators Tracy Pamelia, Robert Quinn, Jennifer Slaybank, and Superintendent Leslie Lockhart. Class of 2020, you have a lot to be proud of. You showed your Culver Pride at athletic events, AVPA performances, school activities, and in the classroom. And you're the first class that I can say you showed your Culver Pride virtually and through Zoom. Your class was a model class of resiliency, being faced with the unexpected and challenged in ways that no one could foresee or plan for, but you did it. And I have no doubt you will continue with this resiliency and determination to accomplish anything you set your heart to. As you take the next step in your journey, I would like to leave you with these parting words. You're gonna be faced with obstacles and there will be times when you are scared. It's natural. Everyone experiences this at some point in their life. And when it happens, and it will happen more than once, do me a favor, take a deep breath and just say, I'm stronger than I seem, I'm braver than I believe, I'm smarter than I think, and most importantly, I'm a proud centaur. And just go for it and achieve your dreams. Congratulations, class of 2020. I miss you all dearly and I wish you the best. Good evening, welcome to Culver City High School's first ever virtual graduation ceremony. And hopefully the last graduation ceremony that we'll ever have to experience online virtually. My name is Shane Goldsmith, and it's been my pleasure being your ASB president. First off, I want to thank the teachers and staff here at Culver City High School for everything that they've done for the class of 2020. Thank you for motivating us and allowing us to reach higher. Um, thank you to those teachers who even doubted us and inspire us to go harder and prove them wrong. Thank you to admin for all their hard work in allowing us to have this graduation experience. 
Thank you to um, Isaac Gershman and Holly Gable for also working with admin to make this virtual experience happen. It means the world. And we're also grateful for your time and effort. Thank you. Now to the iconic class of 2020, or some might say the quarantine class of 2020. Congratulations, we made it. Now I know this isn't what we truly wanted or expected our graduation to look like, but it's the best that we can do during these tough times. And I know one day in the future that we will have the celebration that we truly deserve. Through all the ups and downs, the highs and the lows, we finally finished high school. During our time here at Corpus City High School, we got to witness some iconic moments from athletes dominating on the field, breaking records and winning rings, to AVPA's first ever Sony screening, to the dance team having us all shook with their jaw-dropping choreography, to even James making every Thursday iconic by wearing orange. We didn't get to experience much during our senior year, but we will leave this school remembering some of the amazing people that left a month in our lives. What I'm going to miss most about Culver City High School will probably be interacting with random students or seeing my friends in the hall and saying, hi, my love. I'm going to miss how diverse and inclusive Culver City High School is. During my time at Culver City High School, I made sure that every day when I walked into that campus, that I uplift everyone, put a smile on at least one person's face, and to enjoy each day as if it was my last. As we move on to this next chapter in our lives, let's always remember how hard we worked how we aimed high and made no excuses. From personal loss and self-growth to life changes and transitions. To our four years of high school, we finished our senior year strong, even during a global pandemic. Before I wrap this speech up, I think it's very important for me, a young black man, to speak on the racial inequality that we see in America. As a black man in America, sometimes I do fear that I will too become a hashtag I'm praying that one day God destroys systematic oppression that has plagued this nation for centuries. I'm angry, frustrated, sad, and tired. I'm tired of seeing Black lives being taken too soon, too often. Whenever we see it, however uncomfortable it makes us, whether it upsets our friends or not, we must speak out. To all my non-Black peers, friends, and viewers, I only ask that you educate yourself and those around you on the legacy and history of the systematic racism and to check your privilege and use it for the greater good. Class of 2020, it's been my honor and pleasure being your ASB president, and hopefully I made your senior year somewhat enjoyable. The students in this graduating class played such a massive part in my life, and I'm blessed and thankful for all those who have supported me throughout my high school career. Let's start this new chapter in our lives, ready to move on to new opportunities and experiences. Let's enjoy the ride and move forward with max speed I'm rooting for all of you beautiful queens, and I'm rooting for all of you kings. I want you to be kind, compliment yourself, celebrate yourself, and be your own biggest cheerleader. The future is ours. Let's claim it together, succeed together, and make the world a better place. Our journey is just beginning, so let's enjoy this moment and live it up. Class of 2020, I love you all with all of my heart. Congratulations. We made it. A new chapter begins. Bye, guys. My name is Savannah House. I want to welcome Superintendent Lockhart, CCUSD Board of Education, Principal Cooper, staff, parents, and most importantly, the class of 2020. Maya Angelou once said, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. As the class of 2020, we've been asked to change the world. Since the first day of high school, we were asked to be adaptive problem solvers. But sitting in the hot bleachers of the gym four years ago during freshman orientation, we could not have imagined that during our senior year there would be a pandemic. We could not have imagined we wouldn't get prom or grad night, senior breakfast, or even an in-person graduation ceremony. Even so, we've made an impact on Culver City High School's campus in the last four years that will not disappear with the end of our hoped-for senior year. In Greek mythology, centaurs are both brave and loyal creatures. In the past four years, we've not only been brave enough to change our community for the better, but loyal enough to care about doing so. While we've been at Culver City High School, minds have been changed and precedents have been set for cultural acceptance in our community. Pride flags have been put in all the classrooms thanks to the Tolerance Club. Black Student Union hosted their first ever Queen's Speech event in honor of Black History Month. We've held campus-wide mock presidential elections. Even beyond campus, our clubs have made an enormous impact. The Interact Club has participated in 16 LA food drives in the past four years, and during quarantine just helped send out 110 letters to senior citizens. The Bayona Creek Renaissance Club has helped pass the polysiren ban, making styrofoam illegal in restaurants in Culver City. 
All of these things were student-led. And whether aided by the class of 2020 or led by us in the past two years as upperclassmen, these accomplishments would not have been possible without this graduating class. We have changed minds and attitudes in the last four years, and it did not matter what was standing in our way. Previous attitudes, mindsets, outdated laws, or lack thereof. I attest a lot of this to the amazing teachers. The Miss Cordells, who gave us our toolbox for Lang and for life. The Mr. Deans, who showed us that nothing is impossible. The senior and the Armands, who told us that we could go anywhere. This pandemic is temporary, as hard as that may be to believe right now. And we can continue to be the resilient people we've been for the past four years together. So wherever you may be next year, whether it's out of state or right here at home, remember to continue to be the resilient people we've been for the past four years and as brave as the centaurs we are. Dear class of 2020, so much of this doesn't feel right. Instead of on video, I should be addressing you from the podium on a stage in the center of Helmsfield with family, friends, teachers, and staff marveling at you in your centaur blue caps and gowns. Clearly, this is an unusual way to commemorate 13 years of hard work and the start of your lives as adults. To be honest, I didn't know what I could say that would give this moment meaning while also acknowledging that you're all making a huge sacrifice right now. Before our situations changed seemingly overnight, I'd been making a list of potential graduation speech themes. It was a clever list of topics that I thought would be important to speak about at your graduation. Those topics don't seem so interesting now. What I can say is this, class of 2020, you've already seen and experienced a lot in your life and graduating during a pandemic will inevitably top that list. In this moment, you're preparing to start a job, college, or maybe even a gap year without answers about tomorrow or how long this will last. As with most life altering events though, there are some things that we can learn, some valuable lessons that we can take from this. Going into the next phase of your life, I hope that you remember that life really is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond. When you don't have the power to change a situation, harness the power within you to make the most of that situation. Make the variables work in your favor to end up better than you started even if it simply means learning one new skill, meeting one new friend, or just surviving another day. There will be setbacks and challenges, but those will only stop you if you let them. It's so much easier said than done, but all the cliches are true. Like, if you set your mind to it and you work hard enough, you can achieve your dreams. Until you don't. Because unfortunately, things don't always go as planned. No matter how hard we work. That's not what matters though. Many of you have not had the picture perfect life. And for some of you, this may not even be the worst year you've ever experienced. But you are here, you've made it. You may be exhausted, overwhelmed and frustrated, but you are here, that's the point. This pandemic and all of the challenges you've had for the past 12 years are a small piece of your life. What's more significant is how you've responded and persevered. Your goal was to graduate and you did. Remember this moment in your life every time you encounter adversity. Keep the goal, maintain your integrity, but switch up the method and keep it pushing. Your goals, your values can stay the same while you adjust your process to meet the challenge. And remember, you can't do this alone. Rely on the people who love you who are sitting with you right now, cheering you on near or from afar to keep you encouraged. Surround yourself with people who celebrate your worth and validate your feelings, but don't allow you to wallow in self-pity. Be careful who you share your dreams with because not everyone can see in you what you see in yourself. However, make sure you protect the relationships with those people who see more in you than you've yet to believe. This world is not great right now, and in many ways, it hasn't been in a long time. Every single year, a new class of graduates departs campuses all over this country with eyes wide open in anticipation of newfound freedoms and an opportunity to explore the world their parents may have overly protected them from. And then you realize just why some of your parents overly protected you. The world can be a dark and scary place, but not when there's light. 
and you are our light. You are resilient and you're leaving Culver City High School even better than you found it. You've left your indelible marks on the field, the stage, the court, the labs, the clubs, and most importantly, the people. Your ideas, innovations, and courage created a better Culver City Unified School District, and they can create a better world in the same way. You have a purpose that no one else can fulfill. The setup won't always be perfect. It usually never is, but the key to it can be summed up by a quote from tennis champ, Arthur Ashe. Start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Congratulations, class of 2020. Now go change the world. Welcome, Superintendent Lockhart, Principal Cooper, CCUSD Boards of Education, CCHS Educational Community, guests, and most importantly, the amazing class of 2020. My name is Cooper Komatsu, and I'm honored to be our class's valedictorian. But I haven't completed this long and arduous yet incredibly rewarding journey on my own. First, I'd like to thank my family, my biggest fans since day one, and ultimately the reason why I've been able to do everything I've done in high school. I'd also like to thank the CCHS staff, my teachers, my counselor, my coaches, the administration, the custodial staff, the support staff, for working to make my years at CCHS the most wonderful years of my life so far. But most of all, I'd like to thank you, the class of 2020, for being my closest confidants and my most respected competitors, my sources of entertainment and my sources of inspiration, my community. We may have all gathered here to celebrate, but there's no denying it. Times are tough right now. We're facing a public health crisis unprecedented in recent memory, with 350,000 people having died of COVID-19 worldwide, including 100,000 in the United States alone. We've been told to cover our faces, to stay at home, to socially distance, to possibly never see close friends throughout high school again. We've been reminded that justice is still not guaranteed for all as we grieve the murders of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. But what gives me hope is the fact that we are resilient. We may have not weathered this particular storm before, but we've shown that we're capable of it. I'd like to share some inspiring stories of incredible resilience that I've experienced as a centaur. This year, I've been a math chiron, a mentor and tutor for students in an algebra support class. In addition to helping the class in general, we each chose a student to pay special attention to and present on for a final project. Math was really hard for the student I focused on, and he entered the class really struggling to understand some of the most foundational math concepts. But he persevered. He worked really hard, both in and out of class, always asking for help when he needed it, and completing all of the assignments. I was honored to be able to guide this student toward academic growth, and I'm confident they'll be prepared for future math classes because of their resilience in the face of adversity. Another inspiring story has been that of Mr. Bakunin, my AP physics teacher. Mr. Bakunin has always been the biggest technophobe on campus. He has a flip phone, but he barely uses it. He has only one paper copy of each of his answer keys. He'd just rather be surfing and biking, and I respect that. But when we transitioned to a virtual learning, my classmates and I were understandably concerned. But Mr. Bakunin found a way to obtain a headset and a recording device, and most miraculously of all, set up Canvas and Zoom. There were some technical difficulties at first, but his resilience in learning the new system paid off, and we were able to learn physics just as before. My third anecdote of Centaur resilience actually comes from a student who's speaking today and a friend of mine, Danny Xavier. From the time I entered high school, I was absolutely adamant that I never wanted to go to a school dance. I'd just never seen myself as a person who could do that sort of thing. I resisted in my first three years, but 
This fall, Danny started trying to convince me to go to homecoming. He is the senior class president, so he wanted to make sure the event was well attended. I told him no, that I was sure it wasn't for me, but he reassured me that it would be fun, that it was an integral part of my high school experience, that I'd regret not going. Well, his resilience toward getting me to go eventually did persuade me, and homecoming was a blast. I'm really happy that I went. Sometimes resilience is all about changing the way you see yourself. My algebra support 2T didn't see himself as a strong math student, but he re-envisioned himself and thrived in math class. Mr. Bakunin may have seen himself as a technophobe, but he adapted and became someone who could teach online. I'd never seen myself as someone who would go to dances, but Danny allowed me to see myself as someone who could. And the brave CCHS students publicly protesting police brutality and rampant systemic racism are no longer just kids. They're activists and visionaries fighting for a more equitable future. Although the novel coronavirus pandemic has disrupted our society in catastrophic ways, and although we're grappling with the grave implications of racial prejudice in America, I'm confident that our resilience will allow us to adapt and emerge stronger than ever before. So to all of you, I'd like to issue heartfelt congratulations on your graduation and good luck in your incredibly bright futures. We got this. Dear amazing class of 2020, welcome, congratulations, and I want to thank you so much for giving me the honor of addressing your class today. Being chosen as Teacher of the Year by ASB is more meaningful to me than you guys will ever know. Your class holds a really special place in my heart because so many of you were among the first students I taught here at Culver City High School all those millions of years ago in biology. I know that it was my job to teach you, but I want you to know how much fun I've had watching you grow up and grow into your own unique individuals. I have learned so much from watching you grow up and from being able to teach some of you multiple times. I also want you to know that my heart is broken for you, that your year did not end the way it was supposed to end and that things did not go as planned. I'm sorry for the valedictorian and salutatorian who didn't get to stand on the football field and address their class because they worked so hard for that. I'm sorry for all your missed activities and your missed hugs and your missed goodbyes and your signed yearbooks. And mostly, I'm just sorry that things did not end the way you wanted them to end. I know you know that I don't like the phrase, that's not fair, but I want you to know that I think the way this year ended for you, that wasn't fair. I know graduation speeches are supposed to be filled with wisdom and advice, so I thought about what advice I wanted to give you, and I want to share a story from my life where someone gave me advice that was really meaningful and made a difference. On my, first, um, on my way to my first teaching job, I was driving from California to Albuquerque, New Mexico to start my first teaching job, and I stopped at a park to walk my dog, stretch my legs, and I struck up a conversation with this guy who was in the park. And it turned out he was an English teacher who had been teaching for 20 years. And he was so thrilled and so excited to find out that I was just starting my career as a teacher. And he told me two things. He told me, the first thing he said, I still get nervous every year on the first day of school. And I think that's true. I still get nervous every year on the first day of school. And he also told me that no matter what, to always just be myself. And what he said was, he said, if you're not yourself, Kids are really perceptive, perceptive, and they will see right through you. And I have taken that advice to heart, and I every day I step in the classroom, I don't try to be the most popular teacher, the nicest teacher, or the coolest teacher. I try to be 100% myself. And in doing that, I've tried to teach you as best as I can. Um, this reminds me of one of my favorite quotes, which is from E.E. E. Cummings, and I'm going to read it directly so I don't mess it up. It says, to be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best night and day to make you everybody else means to fight the hardest battle which any human being can fight and never stop fighting. 
So today on your commencement, on your graduation, I know many people will tell you to go out in the world and do great things and be the best, but I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you to go out in the world and be 100% true to who you are and to be yourself. And I promise it won't be easy, but I do promise it will be worth it. Congratulations, 2020. Go kill it. Woohoo! Hello, parents, family, friends, and the graduating class of 2020. It is my absolute honor and privilege to be selected as one of Culver City High School's ASB Teachers of the Year. Thank you to the administration, faculty, and staff who showed me incredible support during my first year at Culver. And most of all, thank you to my amazing students. Although we cannot physically share a traditional graduation experience, the distance cannot diminish how proud I feel for your hard work and your accomplishments. The class of 2020 will forever be unique, bonded together by the shared experience of the past three months. You have shown tremendous resilience and deserve all the praise in the world. The journey may have taken a strange and sometimes scary detour, but the destination remains the same. Today, you graduate and are officially welcomed into adulthood. Having just celebrated my 30th birthday, I think that officially qualifies me to use this platform to lecture you with some life advice. I'll offer you two basic points. The first is to not be afraid to ask for help. It is inevitable that in the next phase of your life that you will find yourself surrounded by those who may be smarter or richer or more well-connected or full of unearned confidence. Don't push your confusions, your fears, and your insecurities deep inside, but share them with those you value. You are never a burden or an inconvenience to talk about your problems. My second piece of advice deals with some of the unspoken realities of adulthood that often go unmentioned in these settings. Yes, your newfound adulthood comes with unparalleled freedom and possibility. But the reality is, most of your days will involve the boredom and frustration that comes from having to fulfill your ever-expanding list of obligations. Because of this, it is very easy to go through life seeing and interpreting the world through your own lens, putting yourself at the center of everything that you experience, where your life is the realest, most authentic one in the whole world. When we inevitably find ourselves stuck in traffic, it is so easy to feel frustrated and angry about how it is affecting you and your day, while forgetting that you are surrounded by cars full of other people whose experiences are just as vivid and real as your own. Cars full of people who may have lost their job, or a family member, or who are going through troubles in their marriage or in their friendships. But remember that they are stuck in traffic too. Those in my class know how much I value empathy. And just like anything else that matters in this life, it doesn't come automatically. You have to work at it by consciously choosing to interpret the world through a lens other than your own. The writer David Foster Wallace talked about this in a college commencement speech he gave back in the ancient times of 2005. In his address, he told the story of two young fish swimming through the ocean when they are met by an older fish who calls out to them saying, morning boys, how's the water? One of the younger fish turns to the, turns to the other and says, what the heck is water? Many of us go through life like those young fish who are so wrapped up in their own perspective and experience that they aren't aware of the important truth that surrounds them. I urge you to be like the older fish. Make the conscious choice to shake yourself free of the autopilot setting of self-centeredness and self-interest, and instead constantly remind yourself to simply be aware, to be truly and authentically aware of the world around you. Thank you for your time, for the honor of this award, and congratulations again to the graduating class of 2020. Hello and congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. I am Leslie Lockhart and I am honored to be your proud superintendent. I know this has been a different year for you and I completely understand how difficult it might have been when Culver City High School closed on March 13th due to COVID-19. I know that you were looking forward to events like prom, grad night, yearbook signing, and other senior activities. And maybe those events were not going to be the most important events to you, but maybe it just was important to be able to walk down the aisle in front of your family and friends to receive your high school diploma. 
Unfortunately, as time progressed, it became painfully obvious that these senior rites of passage activities were not going to occur. Of course, what I don't want you to do, class of 2020, is I don't want you to forget or let COVID-19 overshadow all of the amazing things that did happen in your school career. The amazing performances that you were in or in the championship games that you played in, the friendships that you made along the way, the awards that you received, the trips that you took, the teachers that you met also along the way, all of these things are part of the amazing foundation that you have built, which will support you as you continue to move successfully forward. Additionally, you have proven to yourselves, your family and the community at large, that you are strong and that you are resilient and you possess grit and you have remained focused amidst a lot of global chaos and you class of 2020, in spite of all these things, are now a graduate. These characteristics that I mentioned and that you clearly possess will last far beyond the corsages and far beyond whatever dances you were planning to do at the prom. Class of 2020, I would be lying to you if I told you that everything from now on is easy. You will be faced with some challenges. At times you might question your decisions or you may question the decisions that some of your friends have made around you. You are entering into the next phase of your life, be it college, community college, armed services, or the workforce, and all of it is going to be exciting. There's gonna be some great stuff that's gonna happen. And sometimes there's gonna be some not so great stuff that happens, but you're gonna be able to weather the storm. You're gonna be able to walk through it and come out victorious on the other side. And if you take a look around and there are still plenty of adults who are trying to navigate struggles that you have already overcome. Class of 2020, I hope you take this experience and let it fuel you forward. Realize that there are so many things in our life to never take for granted again, like face-to-face time with friends, the importance of a hug or a handshake, the beauty of our parks and beaches. Remember that every moment counts. Remember that when things get tough, Whatever you do, don't give up. You'll get through it. You will emerge stronger and wiser than before. Mighty Centaur Class of 2020, you would naturally already possess everything you need to be successful in life. Let all of your grit, resilience, and power take you to heights that you never imagined that you would get to. I am so proud of you. As I said before, you are the resilient class of 2020. You are brave. You are strong. I wish you love, peace, good health, and success. Take good care of yourself and take good care of each other.
Well, class of 2020, we're done. Since you are now high school graduates, I wanna say congratulations. Thank you to my parents for guiding me through this epic educational experience. To my fellow class members, I thank each of you for, that, for all that you brought to Culver City High School in our time together. The experiences, the challenges, the teamwork, and most importantly, all the fun we had together. This is not how I expected to end our journey, but I'd like to thank you for everything that you have done to make Culver City High School the best it could be. As we go our separate ways, I wish you all the best of luck. Don't ever give up on what you believe in. I'm positive you can all succeed in anything you do. I hope your future brings nothing but success and happiness. Sadly, this has come to an end, but congratulations to you all. You did it. Hello, class of 2020. Uh, it's Dr. Cooper, your principal, and I just want to say I wish you the best of luck and good luck in all your future endeavors. Hi, this is Mrs. Burton, Assistant Principal of Curriculum and Instruction. Class of 2020, this is your year. Wish you the best. Congratulations. Hello, class of 2020. Um, hate that we're not able to see you face to face, but just know that we've seen your development over the last three to four years. And we're really proud of each and every one of you. And we know you're going to have a successful future and have a huge impact on this world. We're going to miss you. Class of 2020, this is Dr. Tarvid. I'm so very proud of you for reaching this accomplishment in life. We wish you the best. Please be a centaur for life and make us proud. Congratulations on your graduation. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> Culver City High School, class of 2020. On behalf of the counselors, we wanna congratulate you for making it this far on your life's journey. We wanna take this opportunity to share with you a couple things that we have learned about you during these past four epic years. You are unique. You have used your collective voice to make real change on our campus for current and future centaurs. You are resilient. You've proven time and time again, there's nothing that can stop you from persevering through any challenge. Don't let go of that. You are prepared for what lies ahead, from college to career and everything in between. You're ready. Seniors, you've already made history in the classroom, on the field, on the stage, and on the screen. Now it's time to make individual choices that will allow you to live your lives to the fullest. Remember, never let a stumble be the end of your journey. We love you, we're so proud of you, and we can't wait for you to represent your Culver City family well. Mwah!